I'm Nuno. I'm a student at the Technical University of Lisbon. And I'll be pre presenting how we were able to, to build a, a JIT compiler for PHP in about, well, two or three days. <laughs> uh, this project uh, started this year as a, as a Google Summer of Code project that I was mentoring. Uh, the student is named Jonas Govenius. I hope I got his name right. Uh, and, well, so let's see. So I'll start by presenting a, a brief overview of how the, the PHP VM works, some high level description. Uh, the Zen VM is the o official VM uh, implementation for the, the PHP language. And then I will present how this really works and also present some nice results, I hope. Okay, so how does the Zen VM work? So it is like a, a real simple piece of compiler technology. So it just perform some syntax directed translation to write code, so it's really simple. There, there are no abstract trees involved, nor anything, so it's just simple translation. Uh, then it just interprets the, the bytecode, and it performs no o o optimization. So it just dumps bytecode and interprets it. Actually, now there is an extension that is being Develop as we speak, and that aims to pr produce a, 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 an optimizer for uh, PHP bytecode, but it isn't ready just yet. Although th there are some commercial uh, extensions that do that. Okay, so how does this work? So we have the PHP script that gets compiled, then we, we have some bytecode that is outputted, and then we have this execute function that uh, just interprets the, the bytecode. If we include some file, then we compile it and then execute it, and if there is some function call, well, we call this uh, recursively. The interesting thing is that these execute and compile functions are actually hooks. So you can re replace them with your own functions, which is what um, bytecode caches do. So what they do is that they replace the, the compile function, and then uh, when they are asked to, to compile a, a file, they check uh, the cache to see if the, um, uh, the file has already been compiled be before. If not, well, it, it just compiles uh, mm. normally. Okay. So, now let's see how PHP bytecode is uh, engineering. It is really different from what you see in other mainstream uh, VMs. So, <laughs> it is me memory-based as opposed to register-based like LLVM or Parrot or stack based like JVM or .NET stuff. So the PHP bytecode has references to specific memory locations, which is a bit weird, but that's how it looks like. Also, it has no standard representation. So there is no standard like textual representation. And there is also no standard way to serialize the bytecode to disk. So, although there are some extensions that do that, there is no standard way to, to do it. Okay, so it is designed to be just executed and then th throw away, and that's why it is memory-based, because if it was like register-based, it would have to, to perform some register allocation pass, so this way it's much simpler. The problem is that this poses some problems for our JIT compiler and for, and for uh, bytecode caches, because you can share you can share uh, a bytecode array between the processes because it has uh, uh, references to specific mem memory lo locations. So each process has to have its own copy of uh, the bytecode that is going to be executed. 
So here, this retrieve of cached opcodes is actually a real, really difficult uh, op operation. And finally, some information is not stored in bytecode. Why? Because uh, uh, PHP was, was engineering just to be executed and then uh, throw everything uh, out. So, uh, for example, class definitions aren't stored in PHP bytecode. So they are set up in the VM when um, the file is compiled. So it's not like Java where everything is self-contained in the, in the bytecode. This also this this makes our life harder. Okay, so now let's see an example. So we have that simple script. I think it's easy to to know what we will do. And here we have uh, the dump of the the bytecode. So we have that one greater than two, which gets compiled to be smaller uh, with the operand. Exchange, of course, and this is like a, a, a temporary variable. So don't be fooled. This isn't a register or anything like that. It, that's just a pointer to somewhere in the memory. Okay, so this is how the the bytecode look looks like. Yeah. Okay, so now <laughs> I'll try to explain you why we did the things the way we did. So uh, our design is quite similar with what Apple did with the OpenGL uh, shader uh, JIT compiler. So, and I think the, the original is quite similar with them. So we didn't want to rewrite the whole VM from scratch because the VM is evolving every day and our team it's just me, so <laughs> I can't keep with the pace of the, the development of the, uh, the VM. So we clearly don't want to reinvent the, the wheel. So we want to reuse as much code as possible. Also, we were not completely sure that <laughs> this was actually possible. So we really wanted to have some proof of concept really working pretty fast. And that's why the true or three days, so we wanted <laughs> the proof of concept working. Also, we didn't want to constrain the, the future uh, optimization. So we built it in a way that it allows um, future uh, uh, optimizations.